When you walk into a listing, do you think, oh my gosh, I could totally see myself in this house and my stuff in my life? Well, that's probably because that listing has been staged. We're gonna talk about seven easy ways to stage your house when you're getting ready to sell so that a buyer can see themselves in your property and then buy it. The first one is depersonalizing your house. It's important to get all of your things out of your house that are uber, super duper personalized. So family portraits, portraits of the dog, um, knickknacks and tchotchkes that are, are kind of um, really individual to you or your family. Removing all of that is really, even though it might feel sad and um, and be a little bit like, this is my house, I wanna live like this, it's fine but it will really help the people who are coming through your house, the buyers, imagine their stuff in it. Let's be honest, you're getting ready to move, so you might as well downsize and or pack as you're going and getting your house ready to sell. Now, right along the lines of depersonalizing, you are going to be decluttering. That is serious business. And again, you're moving out of this house, so let's just go ahead and pack and get things ready to go and moved on out and out of the way while we're going through each room and really thinking about it. There is nothing wrong with boxing things up and putting them in your garage and staging an area for moving. Buyers know you're moving. There's no shame in that. Um, I would suggest doing that in the garage rather than the basement, but if you need to do the basement, that's fine too. But decluttering is very, very important. Each room really needs to have a, a value space. There needs to be a reason why that room is of value to the buyer. So each room needs a reason, whether it's a bedroom, an office, a um, playroom, a workout room, whatever it is, we, as we go through your house and work on staging together, we really need to find a purpose or sometimes two for one room, for each room. And decluttering is a very important part of making that clear. Another thing that's going to really clean up and sharpen up a room is white bedding and white towels. Now, if you're like me and you have a house full of dogs, there's no white bedding anywhere in the house, but you can get an affordable kind of bed in a bag situation. Also lean on your agent. I have several beds and bags full of fluffy towels, or not fluffy towels, fluffy pillows, beautiful shams, uh, throw pillows that go with pretty much any room, white duvet covers, and white sheets. So you, we can really dress a bed up and, and make it look clean and, and just crisp and ready to go and minimalize all the extra kind of uh, distractions in a bedroom with a bed in the bag or white sheets and white comforter. White fluffy towels in every bathroom is really important too. And again, I can help you with that. And uh, you can dive into my stash if you are one of my listings and we will really clean things up. They don't even have to probably better like mine that have never been used and just there for the show. I mentioned throw pillows in the bedroom. Throw pillows can, av can really elevate any room, uh, whether we are kind of swapping out some older ones on the sofa in the living room, throw pillows on the bed, on the different beds in the house. They really make a big difference. I, again, have tons. Or another really great reference or resource to get throw pillows inexpensively are IKEA. They have the inner pillows that you can, um, that you can buy and then the zip-on throw pillows that uh, are all different colors, all different shapes and sizes, and really good options. After you've cleared everything out, all the tchotchkes, all the personalized little things and decluttered, if your house looks a little bit empty, one way to kind of fill those gaps are big items. So what I mean by that, like, is if you're, if you're staging uh, a bookshelf or you're staging a mantle, having just a few larger items rather than a whole bunch of little things really makes the space sell a little bit better. Along those lines, in the, um, on the walls, if you're needing to fill walls, a couple big pieces of art rather than a whole bunch of little um, smaller pieces that are sort of um, randomly hung really make a difference. I would stay away from the live life love kind of um, uh, word pictures and signs and art that you can find at um, Michael's and all those kind of stores and go with more of a neutral artwork that you can hang. Again, Ikea's great, Target's great, 
and I've got a stash you can borrow. The last little detail that helps you stage a house is greenery. Now, there are some really good looking fake plants out there that you can use and uh, then you don't have to worry about watering them and or uh, borrowing plants or maybe you have some great plants. Having one little piece of greenery of some kind in every room really warms that room up and makes it feel a little bit more alive and um, just creates better oxygen and good juju in each room. So I'd suggest at least one plant in each room. And again, if you can find some decent looking fake ones or borrow some plants from friends or family or your agent, we're happy to do that. The whole idea of staging is to make your house look like someone else can live in it. And we, the buyers really need to come in and really feel like they could, they could make their, their life in this house. So that's the idea of staging. The side effect of staging is getting multiple offers, hopefully, and more money out of your property. So those are all fantastic things. I'm putting a link in the bio or in the um, notes about steps that you might need to take if you're getting ready to sell. If you haven't done it in a while and are thinking about it, I'll put that down there and you hopefully there's something in there that helps too.